Ryan? No, she wouldn't remember. I just got in from Nebraska. N Nebraska? Well, is there a business number? Could you say it again? I don't have a pencil. 721-4315. Thank you.
Yeah, hello. Hello, Gitel. Who? Uh, is this Gitel Mosco? <laughs> no, it's Gitel Mosca. Who's this? Uh, Jerry Ryan. I'm an old friend of Oscar's. We met a couple weeks back at Oscar's party. Remember, I couldn't hear your name over all that music, so you wrote it down for me, along with your phone number. Which one? Which number? No, which one were you? I gave my number out a lot that night. Why? Not everybody calls. I play the odds. I call? Well, you're the first one. You see what I mean? Were you the one with the beard or the one with the lip? Oh. Oh, the one with the sense of humor. The wasp with the white shirt and the narrow tie. Hey, it was my first New York party. I didn't know how to dress. It was different. You were clean. Sure, now I remember. You got that funny way of talking. What funny way? Nice diction. <laughs> so, uh, what's new? Uh, no, nothing much. I just wanted to call and say hello. Oh, hello. Hello.
quiet and listen. Get on the phone. Thank you. Then be quiet and listen. Here we go again. Everyone ready? And one. Hello. Kittle. Yeah? Hello. It's Jerry again. I, I know. I recognize the hello. SOS, Miss Mosca. That means help. What help? What are you talking about? Very desperate situation. A stranger in town sees a pretty girl at party and wants to ask her to dinner. But, Miss Mosca, he's afraid of rejections. To dinner? Who says no to dinner? I mean, even a creep you can shake after the fortune cookies. <laughs> then the answer is yes. The answer is, it depends. Because I want to know if it's dinner or dinner. <coughs> What's the difference? <laughs> dinner is dinner. You know, an hour to fix my hair and on a dress. Or else it's dinner. I wash my hands and we eat. I'm afraid it's only dinner tonight. Oh, fine by me. I hate dinner. <laughs> Too many problems like, should I eat the cold soup with a spoon or drink it? And either way, I'm wrong because it turns out to be a finger bowl. <laughs> hey, meet me at 46 and Broadway at 8, huh? Miss Mosca, class. Listen, I gotta go. It was nice talking to you. And don't worry about me. I'm not slamming, just replacing in haste. Listen. I hate planes, trains, and boats. 
If Nebraska wants to come here, I will be glad to say hello. No interest in broadening your horizons? Oh, now don't give me that. Traveling does not make a person smarter. If New York doesn't have it, I don't want to see it. That's a very provincial attitude. <laughs> I may as well level with you. I'm not very smart. My IQ is somewhere very near to my temperature, without fever. It doesn't bother me to tell you because the longer we sit here talking, the sooner you're going to find out what's provincial. I'm beginning to think me. So why did Nebraska come to New York? Oh, I don't know. I, I guess I just wanted to take a bite out of the Big Apple. You came here to eat fruit? <laughs> Big Apple? New York. It's a local colloquialism. Say that again. <laughs> local colloquialism? Jerry, you have earned my respect for life. Would you like me to teach you how to say it? Oh, forget it. Julia Andrews, you can turn into my fair lady. When you're born on Southern Boulevard in the Bronx, that's it for life. I, I notice you keep looking at the prices. Is money a problem? It wasn't until five minutes ago. Does it help if we go Dutch? It helps you. I'm still in trouble. My check, right? Well, it's worth it. Say it again. Local colloquialism. Oh, I can listen to you say that all night. Does it hurt your tongue? It needs the exercise. I've been alone a lot. What are you, an Italian? Me? Are you crazy? Uh, Moscow? Jewish. It used to be Moskowitz. Why'd you change it? I wanted to sound Italian. <laughs> Listen, don't worry about the money. If you're broke, I can lend you. I got a milk jug back home full of pennies. 38 bucks. You're the only one I know big enough to lift it. Listen, I think you're getting the wrong idea about it. I'm no prospect for welfare. I mean, last year I made $78,000. You're kidding. <coughs> My neighborhood didn't make $78,000 last year. <laughs> what do you do? I'm an attorney. Oh, you mean like a lawyer? <laughs> no, like an attorney. <laughs> now, 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 don't change the subject. You were telling me how little Mosca lost its wits. Oh, I chopped it off. It was too long for up on the marquee. So you're an actress? Dancer. Jazz. Oh, you know. It's better with bongos. <laughs> What's the matter? I say something funny? Oh, uh, no. I, I just like being with you. Uh, you make me laugh. Laugh? How? Ha-ha, I'm feeling good. Or, ha-ha, this girl is a nut. I better get the hell out of here. <laughs> Definitely the former. At this moment, Miss Mosca, I am a very happy flamingo. Oh, that looks good. The bean curd. Uh-huh. And those little things that look like octopus? Yeah. Are. <laughs> <laughs> now let's take our time eating. It took a long time to prepare. How do you know it took a long time to prepare? Oh, I don't. It's just something my mother used to say. You know those mother things? I used to say them. <laughs> my only wish is when you grow up, you'll have a daughter just like you. Then you'll know what I suffer. <laughs> That's amazing. My mother said something like that, too. Don't act surprised. We have mothers in Omaha. Yeah, but not like on the Grand Concourse. Don't forget to put on clean underwear in case you're hit by a taxi and take it to the hospital. I don't want to be ashamed. Or how about food? Eat your carrots, they're good for you. Eat your squash, it's good for you. Eat your octopus, it's good for you. <laughs> Was there anything that wasn't good for you? Oh, uh, yeah. Hot dogs, Italian ices, anything you liked. Jeez. I got the same mother. You know what, Riley? I like you. It's uh, Ryan. And, and, and I like you too.
I've always heard the best thing to do with a new friendship is to solidify it. Solidify it? By some word, some deed, some act. Act? Oh my god, I almost forgot! Sophie's before me tonight and I promised to be there! Sophie? My best girlfriend. She's a rock singer, but she wants to be a Shakespearean actress. Global Street Theater. They're doing Hamlet in the original Puerto Rican. <laughs>
I love mama, I love papa, I love English is what we don't know. Mama, go no papa, go no Spanglish is language, we know Spanglish is expressive of the music. God is typical, come down and help us.
I, I promise, I swear. All right, no need to get all religious about it. Make yourself comfortable. Do you like it? It's, uh, charming. You're being polite? Well, a little, uh, it's not without personality. Just the one room? What one room? Didn't you see the divider? <laughs> I put this up, I got two rooms. I get another divider, I got four rooms. I hang out the window, I got a terrace. <laughs> now this I like. Six feet long, wide enough for two. 99.50 gimbals on sale. What kind of bed you got? Uh, <laughs> Salvation Army, 12 bucks. What happened to 78,000 a year? In Omaha. I'm not allowed to attorney in New York. We don't sleep so well these days. We? You got a roommate? Sure, thousands of them. They're called bedbugs. Oh, you got bedbugs? Kerosene. Spread it on both sides, put it on a clean floor, and whatever runs out, <laughs> step on! I smell something. I burn incense. No, no. Something else. Like old cheese. That's why I burn the incense. I never throw anything out. New Year's Eve, 1963. I opened a bottle of champagne. I still got half the bottle in the fridge. It looks like the Dead Sea. Do you do anything like that? No, I, I don't like loose ends. It's the lawyer in me. When I'm through with something, I get rid of it. Oh. Well, that's one thing we have in common. We are completely opposite about the same thing. <laughs> so, can I get you anything? Uh, a cup of coffee, instant, a uh, piece of pie, frozen. Oh, how about a nice big... You're very tall. A girl could break her neck. We could try it lying down. What if I happen to leading up to things? Ah, uh, they don't even do that in the press anymore. Yeah, we'll do it in New York, please. We're old-fashioned. Oh, uh, sorry. I don't know what came over me. I, I was swept away by the smell of old cheese and dead wine. I'm funny that way. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what way to get funny. It's my house. Oh, oh okay. Hey, uh, who, who's this? Oh, well, it's me. I'm dancing. The uh, cute one is my partner, David. Attractive, but nothing compared to you. Oh, hey, don't let him hear you say that. Listen, he's very talented. Choreographs, too. Only we can't get anyone important to come see our shows. We were going to run a theater last year. Oh, I saved the money myself. Thirteen hundred bucks. But I had to spend it on account of my ulcer. Thousand and forty bucks on the hemorrhage. Two hundred and sixty bucks on tips. Tips? When it comes to saving my life, I am very grateful. <laughs> But you're in good shape now. Oh, I'm glad you finally noticed. Listen, it's, a, it's okay if you want to get funny now. I said funny, not hysterical. <laughs> oh, I should have let you eat that octopus. Let's change the subject. You got any diseases I should know about? Only my old Navy injury. I was wounded seven times. Wow. Where? On the head. I kept banging into pipes. Yeah, you're the tallest guy I ever went out with. My last two boyfriends on top of each other were shorter than you. This is time I'll do it. Hey, would you slow down? I don't even know anything about you. Like, what do you like to do? I'll show you. I mean, during the day. Same thing, only I pull down the shades. <laughs> Boy, how long you been on the wagon? Uh, a year. Well, let's not get all worked up if we're not gonna finish, huh? Who's not gonna finish, huh? <laughs> Me, huh? I mean, I like you, but I got an ironclad rule. I would not sleep with God Almighty on the first date. What do you want me to be, promiscuous? Give me one good reason why I should be. Because I, I don't talk to anybody. I live in a rat hole on West 97th. I've worn out a pair of shoes in the museums and a pair of pants in bad movies. And, and if I have to hike over one more beautiful bridge by myself, so help me, I'll jump 
And I don't feel like jumping today because it just so happens to be my birthday. And I'm not wearing clean underwear. And I wouldn't want my mother to be ashamed. Well, my God, why didn't you say it was your birthday? My God, that changes everything. <laughs> He's happy? 
Yeah, he's happy. I think I've heard the term before, young lady. Look, they've got a lot of problems. I'll take you on the next march to Central Park. You hear a few speeches, you're ready to fight. And when do unmarried Jewish girls with ulcers march? They can't. The park's not big enough to hold them. <laughs> so what do you say? It's OK about David? Sure, go ahead. Say it again. Sure, go ahead. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Local colloquialism. Not a hell of ballet class. So I miss one. <laughs> Jerry, where does he live? 
I got the address, uh, East 63rd. Oh my God, uptown? Jerry, that's dinner. I can't go, I don't belong up there. I get a nosebleed north of 14th Street. Gil, it's dinner, it's not the electric chair. Hello? I wish it was. At least there you sit nice. You don't have to worry about which fork to use. Operator, please tell your party that Mr. Ryan isn't in. What, right not now. in? You're right here. Operator 365, thank you. Jerry, an operator number? That's long distance. How do you know it's not somebody sick or something? It was Omaha, Gittle, the soon-to-be ex Miss Ryan, and I'm not up to that tonight. My God, the Tavaki! It's still in the oven! <laughs> Test, 
Tess. Tess! Her cold tablet doesn't seem to be working. Gil, turn around. Look at me. Don't pretend. It hurts. Show me that it hurts. It hurts. Give me something to hold on to. You don't need it. She wants us to meet her at the club. You and Jerome meet me there after dinner. You 
look smashy. You're going to be terrific. I love you.
house tonight. A former sparklet, Sophie, who left me to become a Shakespearean actress. Now why would anybody leave me to become a Shakespearean actress? I don't know, you tell me. Say it with me. Boring! <laughs> Excuse me, sir! I am a star. I am a professional Shakespearean actor.
your doctor? Dr. Segan. That was probably him on the phone, but you better call the hospital. St. Vincent's. That's where they took me last time. You lunatic, you damn nitwit. Why didn't you tell me? I didn't want to trap you, Jerry. Trap me? And just stay with me. I hate myself, but I can't help it. I don't want you to leave me. I'm not leaving. Operator, St. Vincent's, please. St. Vincent's, send an ambulance right away. Now, it's an emergency. 342 East 4th Street. Right away. Come on, right away. Than that. I had to stop by the apartment. 
Paul Bates lent me eight volumes of the Civil Practices Act, and I had to drop them off. Gittel, I've decided to learn a few statutes. What for? Well, I called my father-in-law today, and I told him to shove the affidavits. I suddenly got this idea that if I asked for this one last favor, there'd be another one last favor lurking behind it. So I'm pitting my aging brain against the New York State Bar Exam, which happens to fall exactly two weeks after your showcase. What showcase? What are you talking about? Yours and David's. I've been doing a little extra work around the office, and this morning I stopped by the theater and dropped off $1,300. Oh, Jerry, what did I do to deserve you? Oh, have a hemorrhage. Some girl's got a gorgeous ship. I got a sexy also. You sure do. Jerry, oh, Jerry, oh, Jerry, not on the cross. <laughs> this is a semi-private group. Oh, I can't hear a thing. I'm gonna go and be coma. You know what, Jerry? I love you. I know I shouldn't say it, but I can't help it. I'm glad you say it, Gil. Still, I'll try not to say it too often. Try to look. Hey, what are you doing? I'm getting you up. I want to take a walk with my girl. Besides, the doctor said if you don't get up today, your blood will rust. So what if I like rusty blood? You may, I don't, and two of those pints are mine. So take her back and give up. Oh, come on. Oh, Jerry, Jerry, I'm dizzy. So what else is new? <laughs> we've got it. I'm afraid we've got it. That light we urge when we're alone.
business paying rent on two apartments when you're at my place all the time. Are you sure, Jerry? I mean, having my own place might be a good idea. Suppose we have a fight or something, and I got somewhere to go and be mad. As soon as we're done painting your place, I'll definitely move in. Maybe. All right, you win. But only because who lives where is not what's on my mind right now. Jerry, we can't. There's a class going on outside. Besides, you've got that statue to learn. It'll wait. But the bar exam won't. Jerry, you know, the fat end of my spinal column is one of my highly erogenous zones. <laughs> <laughs> nope, 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 nope. Besides, we had a deal. One for one. One statue for one moment of madness. But there are over 5,000 statues. So we got the weekend. Uh, Jerry, mm -hmm. we have now arrived at an homogenous zone that I did not even know that I had. <laughs> a statue! All right, but I'm picking a raunchy one. Section 3411, motion to dismiss a cause of action. action. A party may move for judgment dismissing one or more causes of action based on the grounds that... Jerry? Yeah. This is a long one, isn't it? Ten clauses. Go to hell with it. So you'll be a CPA. <laughs> Manufacturer. 
very sorry for you your marriage broke up. But I'm very happy for me. <laughs> Gee, that's a lousy thing for me to say to you. And you're paying long distance charges to hear it. New York? Mm -hmm. Oh, when'd you get in? Well, I, I would invite you over, but to tell you the truth, I don't think I want to see what you look like. My confidence is shaky as is, and I like to picture you ugly if you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> the Waldorf Hotel! Yes, I'll tell him. To sign what affidavits? The final decree? You mean you're actually divorced? No. No, he didn't tell me. But I I'm sure he was going to. Eventually, someday. Listen, it was very nice bumping into you like this. I want to wish you all the best of luck in your new life. God, I'm a real good old. Goodbye, Mrs. Ryan. X, Mrs. Ryan. Tess. Oh, okay. Tess. I just found for a new friend, my buddy Tess Ryan. Oh, hi, Jerry. Why don't you make yourself a TV dinner? Me and Tess are going to the movies. She sounded nice, confident, soft-spoken, educated, disgusting. Looks like the Breck shampoo ad. A nice type, if you like, 1938. Skinny, tall and skinny, Dina Merrill. Oh, she'll look good when she's 80. Keeps a suntan blizzard. No, no, short and squat. Short and chunky, short and stacked. That's it, an athlete, Mrs. Winner. Daddy, daddy, look, another blue ribbon. Oh, she could beat his pants off at tennis if she wanted. But she doesn't want, because she's smart. Short, stacked, and smart. Who's short, smart, and stacked? Napoleon. Would you stay out of my thoughts? Then keep them quiet. You know, you talk to yourself? I like talking to myself. <laughs> Why? When I talk to you, I feel like a jerk. When I talk to me, I feel like somebody. Don't people say hello in Nebraska? Mr. Ryan is not in Nebraska. Well, neither is Mrs. Ryan. What do you mean? She's at the Waldorf Hotel. She's in the daddy suite. How do you know? Because I just talked to her on the phone. She wants you to sign some damn affidavits. What are you so mad about? Because she's gorgeous. No, she's not. Don't tell me. I just talked to the woman. She is gorgeous. Yeah, she is not gorgeous. She's pretty. She's attractive in a sort of soft, feminine way. God, that's worse than gorgeous. How did she sound toward you? Buddy, buddy. Wednesday I'm going to her place for bridge, and tomorrow she's coming here for bowling. You're jealous. I, I love it. Jealous. I am not jealous. You got a picture of her? Yeah. I don't want to see it. What <laughs> are you still doing with a picture of her? I mean, if you're going to get a golf, you give away the sticks. You're upset about something. I am not upset about anything. Why didn't you tell me about the divorce? Oh, she told you. You think she called up to give me a recipe? <laughs> Why didn't you tell me, Jerry? I know we don't discuss your law journals, but divorces I'm interested in. I don't know. I, I guess I just had to live with it for a little while. You didn't want me to know. Okay. Maybe you never wanted me to know. But it's okay to tell her all about me. Don't yeah. touch me! I had to tell her, Gil. She still loves you, you know. Oh, she did not tell she me She didn't that. have to. I could hear it in her voice. She could have dialed the wrong number. I could still tell. All the more reason for me not to hurt her now. And what about what hurts me? Like when you get a divorce and it's a secret between the two of you. My God, one day you'll finally marry me and she'll know it and I won't. Hey, hey, where are you going? I gotta rehearse for that my way. You're not leaving get my Get out of my way, Jerry, or I swear to God I will let you have Sit it. Sit down. Get out of my get way, Sit Jerry. down, get
should have told you about the decree, and, and I'm sorry. I would have told you tonight after the concert. You can believe that or not as you like. Now I'm going to see Tess. I'm going to find out why she's here, and I'm going to send her back. I'll meet you at the concert from there. Get on. What? Still friends? Still. Friends? I'll see you at the concert.
You know what I feel like? Graduation. Like I'm sitting in an auditorium looking proud. And you're up there in one of those black things in a cardboard hat. You did it, David. You really did it. No, Giddle, we did it. Us. And you're going to be there right with me as soon as I can work things out. I mean, look, why can't the assistant have an assistant? I don't think so, David. See, I've been doing a lot of thinking lately about me and dancing. It just doesn't happen anymore. What do you mean, what doesn't happen anymore? You're a dancer, dancing's your whole life. I've got 18 years, and I'm nowhere near where I thought I'd be. But hey, don't feel bad, huh? Because there's something else my life is. I don't know what yet, but I'm going to find out. Anyhow, after Jerry passes the board, who's going to have time for classes, huh? He won't be able to afford a secretary right away, so it'll probably have to be me. Gil, you're not a secretary. Yeah, I need to brush up on my shorthand and my typing. It couldn't hurt. A secretary can always make an honest living. Gil, you're a dancer, you are. <laughs> oh, jeez. Look at me, huh? One o'clock, in the morning, in the snow, and I'm giving lectures on speed writing. I better let you get home. Bye. David. Put it out, Kittle. You said goodbye like it was goodbye or something. The show rehearses here. And when it's out of town, it's only for a couple of months. We're us. Together. Like always. Besides, you're going to take care of the studio. Oh, all what right? studio? There's not going to be any studio. They come because you teach, not because I'm there. You're going to be a big choreographer. Listen. It's graduation. Thank you, David. I love you, Kiddo Mosca! Which one? The one that goes to Omaha? <laughs> oh, 
Okay, get me the payphone at Kennedy. How many? Four hundred and sixty-two. Well, business must be pretty good. Never mind, operator. I'll wait in case he calls me. Yeah. Yeah, man. You too. No kidding. Oh, dirty bastard. Jeez, that's rough. Four kids? You wasted eleven years?
Yeah. Hi, so, Jerry. There's a carton of odds and ends in the kitchen. The janitor has the key if there's anything you want. Uh, I don't want anything. If you do. And if anything comes up, I'll be at the Commodore Hotel in Lincoln. That's Nebraska, not Nevada. <laughs> not Nevada. Once I get an office and a phone, I'll send you the number. If you need anything before then. I don't then. need anything. I'm all right now, Jerry. You just, you get what you want out there, huh? I'll try. My terms are steep. I won't work for my father-in-law, and I won't live in Omaha. All we have is what I earn. Tess understands that. It's a new deal for both of us. I'm rooting for you, Jerry. I'm rooting for you, too. Hey, just don't give up on him. It's a big city. He's bound to be around some corner. No, oh, I won't. You know me, I bounce up like... like a jack-in-the-box. I'll send you a birthday card every now and then, huh? Now and then. Twice a week. Oh, Gil, what am I doing? No, I Jerry, just... you're doing right. I don't want any handouts either. You taught me that. I deserve somebody to take care of me who's all my own. And nobody like Wally or Oscar either. Between the two of them, they couldn't take care of a chiclet. <laughs> Things look different to me now, Jerry. You've done me a world of good. Did I? I'd like to think that. <laughs> sure. I mean, it's the first affair where I came out with more than I went in. Whoever this guy is, Jerry, he'll owe you. Tess will owe you too. More than she'll ever know. Just, just don't forget who you are, Gittle. I promise you I never will. Goodbye, Gittle. Bye, Jerry. I love you. Long as you live, I want you to remember the last thing you heard out of me was I love you. I love you too.
That's all it 